The World War II left a lasting impact in the past up to the highlights of today. It gave our world an experience like no other. Filled with tactics, strategies, and remarkable stories, this period in time was truly memorable. Today, we dig into the 12 amazing discoveries found during this era. Number 1. The Bad R. Rolsen Archives Imagine the Bad R. Rolsen Archives as a huge collection of papers and records, from the time of World War II and the Holocaust. These important archives are located in Germany. Inside, you'll find documents about people who went through hard times during the Nazi era, like those who were in concentration camps or forced to work in labor camps. The archives also hold stories from survivors and details about families who were torn apart. These archives are like a way for us to learn about the past and honor those who face these difficult situations. Researchers and others can go through them to gather knowledge, and they make sure to keep people's personal information private. These play a really big role in helping us understand history and the terrible events that unfolded during that period. Think of these archives as a real treasure chest, but one that's delicate. Inside, you'll find personal stories and private stuff about people who went through incredibly tough times. That's why we've got to treat them with kid gloves, making sure to respect people's privacy as we dig into the past. These are like a golden ticket for understanding what happened in history, especially the awful things that went down during World War II. Number 2. Enigma Machine Back in 1918, a German engineer named Arthur Scherbius came up with a clever invention called the Enigma Machine. It was like a mix of electronics and mechanics, kind of like a typewriter. This contraption used some spinning rotor thingies to jumble up messages, making them super secret. Interestingly, Scherbius originally thought this device could be used for regular business stuff. But surprise, surprise, during World War II, the Nazis got their hands on it and used it to send important hidden messages between their leaders and troops. To decode these messages, the person on the receiving end needed their own Enigma machine. Quite the sneaky communication tool. Picture this. World War II is in full swing, and the German big shots are using the Enigma machine to lock up their messages from the Allies. Those messages were like secret gold, and the Allies knew that cracking them wide open could give them a total edge. They could expose the chinks in the Nazis' armor of coded secrecy. Imagine it like this. The Enigma machine was the Nazis' go-to padlock, and the Allies were the master lockpickers. Once they cracked that code, it was like they found the key to unlock the Nazis' secrets. And guess what? That gave them a huge advantage in the war. So bottom line, the Enigma machine wasn't just a fancy gadget. It was a game-changer that set the stage for modern encryption and helped turn the tide of World War II. Number 3. The Ghost Army Back on January 20, 1944, something pretty wild came into action. The 23rd Headquarters Special Troops, better known as the Ghost Army. This was like the OG squad in U.S. Army history to pull off sneaky tricks. Picture this, a bunch of 82 officers and 1,023 guys, all under the command of the experienced Colonel Harry L. Reeder, were part of this super-secret unit. What made it stand out? They could pretend to be two whole divisions, like 30,000 dudes, and they were masters of using sights, sounds, and radio trickery to outsmart the Germans in the last year of World War II. Once the war wrapped up, the crew in this unit had to zip their lips, secrecy mode activated. They stashed away records and gear like it was a secret stash of snacks. Apart from a single newspaper piece right after the war, you couldn't get anyone to spill the beans about these tricksters until a 1985 article by Smithsonian spilled some juicy details. Even then, although folks knew about the 23rd Headquarters Special Troops, it was still kept hush-hushed by official types until the mid-1990s. Number 4. The Amber Room All right, let's chat about amber, the vaulted gold, and its cool ties to World War II. This ancient tree resin, loved for its beauty and sometimes carrying old stuff inside, has a pretty wild story that's all tangled up in the war's crazy times. Picture this. While the world was going bonkers, the Nazis were on the hunt for precious things like art, gold, and cultural gems. And wouldn't you know it, Amber, with its rich history and irresistible charm, was on their radar too. They had their eyes locked on the Amber Room, this crazy fancy chamber decked out in amber panels, gold leaf, and mirrors. This room was like a big-time target. But when the ward's temperature heated up, the room got dismantled, and its parts were stashed away safe and sound. Here's where it gets really heavy. As the war was inching towards the end, things got murky for the Amber Room's whereabouts. 
Allied bombs and Soviet troops moving in just added to the chaos. And despite all the attempts to locate and restore the Amber Room, those original panels stayed MIA. The Amber Room story is a blend of art, history, and a good old mystery. It's like a snapshot of the crazy times during World War II and our forever fascination with lost treasures. It's also a solid reminder of how war can mess with cultural heritage and how we're always digging into the past to uncover its hidden tales. Number 5. Yamashita Gold Here's a wild tale about Japanese General Tomoyuki Yamashita. So the story goes that during World War II, he supposedly went around and took gold, jewels, and cool artifacts from 12 different countries in East and Southeast Asia. He buried all these treasures in secret spots in the Philippines. But guess what? Yamashita never got the chance to enjoy his loot. In 1946, the Americans caught him, convicted him of war crimes, and hanged him. Bye-bye treasure dreams. Fast forward to 1971, and we meet a treasure hunter named Rohelia Rojas. This guy was a locksmith, and he stumbled upon one of Yamashita's hidden stashes. Inside, he found gold bars and a statue of Buddha, which altogether weighed over a ton. But hold up, that's not all. Rojas discovered that the Buddha's head could be taken off and inside, there were handfuls of uncut diamonds. Jackpot, right? However, Rojas's happiness didn't last long, because here comes Ferdinand Marcos. This dude ruled the Philippines like a boss until 1986. When he heard about Rojas's discovery, he allegedly had him caught and forced to spill the beans about where the treasure was hidden. Marcos then supposedly took most of the treasure for himself. His family never really talked about it until 1992. Now, in 1992, Ferdinand's widow, Imelda Marcos, decided to spill the beans. She said her late husband did find some Japanese gold after the war, but he didn't tell the tax people about it because there was just so much gold that it would have been too embarrassing. Turns out, this gold was tucked away in lots of places even inside the walls of their house. Imelda still won't say where the rest of the gold might be hiding. Quite the mystery. Number 6. Adolf Hitler's Fuhrer Bunker As the Russians were getting closer and bombs were raining down on Berlin, something important happened on this very day, January 16 but years ago. Adolf Hitler decided to hide underground. He found refuge in a place that's still there today, buried about 50 feet below the gardens of the Reich Chancellery. He spent his last 105 days in this hideout called the Fuhrer Bunker. Now for a shelter during air raids, this place was actually quite fancy. It had its own heating, electricity, and running water. Imagine that. According to Ian Kershaw's book, Hitler, a biography, this reinforced bunker was about 3,000 square feet in size. You could reach it through a corridor with a red carpet, and the walls were decorated, with paintings moved from Hitler's fancier rooms in the chancellery, which sat right above the bunker. Inside, in his workspace, hung a painting he really cherished, a portrait of Frederick the Great. All right? Let's dive into the story of Adolf Hitler's secret spot during World War II, the Fuhrer Bunker. This wasn't your average hideout. Think of it as Hitler's grand finale, a super hidden underground lair right smack in Berlin, Germany. Imagine this, the war is wrapping up and things are going seriously south for Hitler and his gang. So what's his game plan? He goes subterranean, holding up in this bunker. It's like a high stakes game of hide and seek, where the prize is the fate of the entire war. But hold up. This isn't your cozy little nook. Nope, it's a full-on fortress bunker, built to shrug off bombs and attacks. This is where Hitler lived, worked, and called the shots in those last days. It's also where he decided to end it all, in April 1945, just as the Allied forces were closing in on Berlin. Talk about a cinematic twist, the war's biggest villain, making his final moves underground, while the outside world falls apart. The Fuhrer bunker is like a time capsule freezing those intense last moments of World War II for us to ponder. Number 7. The Dead Sea Scrolls The Dead Sea Scrolls are like really old writings that were found between 1947 and 1956 around the Dead Sea area, near a place called Qumran in modern-day Israel. These scrolls are a super cool discovery for archaeology and history because they help us learn about how ancient Jewish people lived, their culture, and what they believed in during a time called the Second Temple Period. Inside these scrolls, you can find all sorts of stuff, like parts of the Hebrew Bible, you know, the Old Testament, explanations, laws, songs, prayers, and words about the religious stuff a group of Jewish people practiced around Qumran. These writings are in languages like Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek, 
and they were scribbled on materials like parchment and papyrus. What makes these scrolls so important is that they teach us about how religious ideas grew, how Judaism evolved, and what the world was like when Christianity was just starting. They even show us different versions of the Bible and tell us what these groups of Jewish folks believed in. And if you're into language and history, these scrolls are like gold because they show how the Hebrew Bible's words changed over time. When these scrolls were found, they caused a lot of arguments and deep thinking among scholars. People still study them today to learn more about the past and the roots of both Judaism and Christianity. Many of these scrolls now live in the Israel Museum in Jerusalem, so people can check them out and learn from them. Number 8. Wreckage of Worship, U.S.S. Indianapolis Back on July 30, 1945, something really sad happened. The ship called the Indianapolis got hit by torpedoes from a Japanese submarine and sank in just 12 minutes. This event is one of the most tragic things to ever occur in American naval history. The people who were on the ship went through an incredibly tough experience, and their story is a heartbreaking one. After five days of floating, a Navy plane that was out on its usual rounds stumbled upon the survivors by accident. Talk about luck! That finally led to their rescue. Can you believe that after all that mess, only around 316 of the crew made it out alive? This ship's sinking and the crew's suffering turned into one of the biggest tear-jerking stories of World War II. Now fast forward to August 2017, that's when a bunch of folks, led by the co-founder of Microsoft, Paul Allen, found the USS Indianapolis wreck. They located it way deep down, like 18,000 feet. That's about 5,500 meters below the sea's surface in the Philippine Sea. This discovery gave some closure to the families of the crew who didn't make it, and shed more light on just how significant this ship's sad fate was in history. What makes this even sadder is that the Navy didn't realize the ship was late to its next stop, so they never sent anyone to look for it. Only 317 crew members managed to survive. They were spotted and rescued by a passing plane. After this whole ordeal, starting from 1960, the survivors began to meet up for reunions in Indianapolis, the ship's namesake city. Number 9. Sinking of Bismarck Let's dive into this famous World War II story, the one where something big happened. It was during the years of 1939 to 1945, and there was this tough battleship called the Bismarck. Picture this, it was on the run, trying to find safety in a French port called Brest, which was under enemy control. Now, here's what went down. The Bismarck, and another ship called the Heavy Cruiser. Prince Eugen set sail from a place called Kiel, in the Baltic Sea on May 18, 1941. Their plan was to break out into the Atlantic Ocean and cause some serious trouble for the British ships carrying supplies. But things took a turn when an aircraft spotted them while they were refueling near Bergen. This set off a huge operation involving both ships and planes to stop them. A little later, the ships were seen in a spot called the Denmark Strait, which is between Iceland and Greenland. On May 24, they got into a fight with the British battlecruiser Hood and a battleship called the Prince of Wales. Unfortunately, the Hood blew up, with almost everyone on board lost, and the Prince of Wales got damaged. The Bismarck also got hit and, importantly, lost access to a big amount of fuel stored in a front tank. Later that day, planes from a carrier called the Victorious swooped in for an airstrike. This was a big deal, as it was the first time planes from a carrier attacked a big warship in the open sea. They managed to hit the Bismarck with a torpedo, but it didn't do much damage. Some folks now think that when the Bismarck was in bad shape, the big ship didn't just go down on its own. The Nazis might have deliberately sunk it. Number 10. SS Gerasaba Back in the early days of World War II, there were these groups of German submarines, kind of like wolf packs, that roamed the seas. They caused a lot of damage by attacking the ships that were helping the Allies in the war. One of the ships that got caught up in this chaos was the SS Gerasaba. It was on its way from Bombay to London, carrying a bunch of silver bars. Sadly, the ship never made it to its destination. It sank near Ireland, and so many people lost their lives along with the valuable cargo. After 70 long years, the wreck of the Gerasapa was finally discovered, and they managed to bring up the special silver bars. The best of these historic silver treasures are now being offered by Finest Known Financial, a company that deals with treasures from shipwrecks. Fast forward 70 years, and Odyssey Marine Exploration found the wreck of the Gerasapa. 
They documented the discovery and started bringing up the silver bullion that was still in the sunken ship. In 2012, they managed to bring up around 1.4 million ounces of silver bars, and in 2013, they got another 1.8 million ounces. In total, Odyssey has gotten more than 110 tons of silver bars from the Garisapa shipwreck. This is actually the biggest and heaviest collection of valuable metal ever recovered from a shipwreck in history. Number 11. The Roswell Incident The Roswell Incident is one of those stories that's hooked people's interest for a good while now. It all kicked off back in July 1947 in Roswell, New Mexico, with something pretty darn strange. At first, the U.S. military came out and said they'd found a crashed flying disc that got everyone buzzing with thoughts of maybe having alien visitors. But then things got a bit twisty. The military quickly changed their tune and claimed it was just a weather balloon that had crashed. Well, that switch made a bunch of folks suspect there might be more going on behind the scenes. As time went by, the Roswell incident turned into a total hub for conspiracy theories and wild ideas about life beyond Earth. People started tossing around the notion that maybe just maybe the military had actually come across a spaceship from another planet, but they were keeping it hush-hush. Some even thought they'd found actual alien bodies, along with the crash stuff. Now, even though the U.S. government has stuck to their weather balloon story that hasn't stopped the Roswell incident from becoming a big deal in pop culture, it's inspired books, movies, TV shows, and a whole bunch of chit-chats about what really went down on that day. While the truth is still hanging out in the shadows, the Roswell incident has definitely added a touch of intrigue to our fascination with the unknown and the thought of life out there in space. Whether it was just a weather balloon or something way more wild, it's a story that's managed to keep folks guessing and talking for many years. Number 12. SS Richard Montgomery The SS Richard Montgomery was this massive U.S. ship, part of a type called Liberty Ships, which were built quickly during 1943 to help with the war. It was around 7,146 tons, and it was put together by a company in Florida. Back in August 1944, the ship was filled up with about 7,000 tons of explosives and stuff, and it joined a group of ships heading to the UK and then to Cherbourg. When it got to the Thames estuary, it was told to stop and anchor near Sheerness. The plan was to wait for more ships to form a group before continuing the journey across the channel. But things took a turn on August 20, 1944. The ship's anchor didn't hold well, and it ended up getting stuck on a sandbank near the Isle of Grain, a little north of the Medway Approach Channel. It got stuck right in the middle of the sandbank. They started working really hard to take out its cargo. But here's the sad part. By the next day, a big crack showed up in the ship's hull, and water started coming in at the front. They worked like crazy to save it until September 25. By then, they had managed to take out about half of the stuff on board. But it got so bad that they had to give up because the ship was completely underwater. So, here's the thing. The wreck of the SS Richard Montgomery is still sitting on that sandbank where it got stuck. You can see parts of the ship's masts sticking out above the water when the tide is high or low. And here's a really concerning detail. There are still about 1,400 tons of explosives left in the front part of the ship's holds. Telling us that a war that has happened years ago still leads to traces and pain spots. Which reminds us once again that we have to be careful and we have to choose world peace after all. What's your favorite discovery from World War II? Thanks for tuning in to this video. If you enjoyed watching, don't forget to give it a like and thumbs up. Also, make sure to subscribe for more content like this.